Hi, it's Tom. In this tutorial, we're going to develop a Windows form based project in C Sharp. Specifically, we're going to add and remove controls to and from the form dynamically at runtime. To get the most out of this tutorial, you should already be comfortable with creating Windows forms using Design View, as well as using basic controls like buttons and labels, radio buttons, panels, that kind of thing. You should also understand events and how to write event handlers. In previous tutorials, we created custom form controls and class libraries. In this tutorial, we're going to be making use of those. Let's have a look at the finished program to get a sense of what we're trying to achieve. I wrote this version of the program live with my students in class last year. The form is relatively static as it opens. There's a picture box. That's uh, currently showing the, the back of a playing card. There's a few labels. This label shows how many cards are supposed to be in this deck, which is what this picture box represents. Uh, other just decorative labels here, play area, home area, uh, a little bit of instructions. There's some radio buttons, which we'll talk about, as well as uh, exit and reset buttons. The dynamic part occurs when I click the picture box. Doing so creates a new control. It sets the appropriate properties and wires the appropriate events. It adds that control to the form, specifically in this panel called Home Area. As I add new controls to the form, you can see the existing controls are repositioned dynamically. Okay, I always want to, if I keep on adding controls, by the way, you can see it gets smaller and smaller. I still want to be able to see the card. I can see that uh, at least the mouse over event has actually been wired. So something's happening. It's this little visual. I'm making the card larger so they can see whichever card happens to be underneath the mouse. Also, when I click the card, um, it removes it from the home area panel and pops it into play area. I can do that with a, a couple of times here. And uh, this actually works both ways. All right, so this is uh, just an example of, you know, controls that are... Um, created and manipulated dynamically as the program is running. Another idea we'll explore uh, in this tutorial is using a drag and drop type of user interface. Uh, when I select the drag radio button, you can see that the, the form resets. And as before, I, I click on the picture box in order to add cards. By the way, uh, if I keep on adding 52 cards, Nothing to do with the drag and drop at this point, but just to show you. Um, oh, that's a lot of cards. Don't want to overshoot it. <laughs> there we go. The picture box disappears, and if I click it one more time, it resets it again. Uh, so that's something we'll see in the tutorial. It's not central to it, but anyways. Um, here I am adding some controls. You can see the uh, you know mouse overing has the same effect, uh, but uh, it's there's no click event, um, or it's not obvious what the click event is doing. In order to get the card or the control to the uh, play area panel, I have to drag it. So you can see I've got a little visual thing on the on the cursor, uh, telling or the mouse pointer I should say, telling me where I can drag it. If I drag it over to the uh, play area and release it. Um, that's where the card goes. Okay, so just a little bit of a different um, uh, user interface style there, um, and I think uh, that might be useful to you. So we'll, uh, we'll close this off, and we'll get back to the project in Visual Studio. For those of you that are students in my course, you'll be able to download the starter solution from our LMS. All of the basic controls are already on the form so that we can focus in just on the dynamic part. Uh, let's start the program at this point. And um, so you should see the form pops up. You know, we've got a nice little about menu, uh, menu item that shows uh, just some information there. By the way, I notice that I, I, I do acknowledge where I've got these uh, card images from. That's uh, the proper thing to do for, for sure. Um, there's a picture box. I've loaded it with a card back. Uh, but when I click on it, nothing actually happens. So all the, basically that's that's going to be the main dynamic, um, at least to get things started, uh, the, the dynamic elements started. Uh, the radio buttons are there. There is a reset button that actually has some code behind it, but you don't really see it yet. 
and then of course an exit button. You should also note that I've added references, see if I can find them here and make this a little bit wider, um, to two dynamic link libraries. Uh, one of them, which is called uh, Demo Cards Library, um, is a class library that defines what playing card objects are and what decks are, and importantly, uh, a special class called the uh, Card Dealer, uh, which you, you may not have, but we'll look at it in a, sec in a second. Actually, let's look at it right now. So this is the uh, class library project itself. Um, so you'll notice that in, inside this uh, class library, there's an enumeration for card rank and card suit. Uh, there's a playing card class, uh, which is an object with you know rank and suit and that sort of stuff. Um, there's a deck class, which is a, a read-only collection that basically has the, um, the 52 cards uh, initialized properly. And then finally, there's this card dealer class, now, what a card dealer is supposed to do is it's supposed to uh, model uh, the real-world device uh, used in casinos, primarily for blackjack, called a card shoe. Uh, a card shoe holds um, lots of cards, like multiple decks of cards, uh, all shuffled together, um, and the, um, the, the dealer is able to actually draw a card um, from this shoe. Um, so that's the idea behind this, this class. It's a collection class. Um, and it's a collection of card objects. Um, there's, you'll notice there's a, a deck field. That deck field is really just used to initialize the card dealer, like what, where it's actually getting the cards, what cards to use. Um, but you could potentially use this class for multiple decks worth of cards. Um, in particular, the method that we're going to be uh, primarily focused in on is this draw card method. Uh, the draw card method, um, you, uh, you pass it a playing card object, and it will make that playing card object uh, equal to uh, one of the cards from the shoe. Uh, and then it returns true or false, and there'll be one less card in the, in the card dealer. Uh, notice too, that the card dealer raises a couple of events. The, the event that we're more, mostly concerned with in this tutorial is this out of cards event. So the idea is that if you've drawn uh, a card from the card dealer and uh, there's no more cards left, uh, this this event will uh, will fire off. All right. So the second DLL that I've uh, uh, included in the starter file is uh, my card box. Um, so uh, this is a custom control. It's basically a picture box with some special stuff wired to it for showing uh, cards. So that's what we're going to actually dynamically create in these two panels. Uh, we we actually went through. Uh, creating a card box in a previous tutorial. So if you're unfamiliar with that, you can go back and, and run through that tutorial at this point. Uh, you should note that I haven't given you the, the source code for either of these things. Uh, certainly if you're a student in my class, uh, you should have done the previous tutorial on card boxes already, and you should be developing your own uh, class libraries. Um, what I have done, however, is in the actual solution file, um, I've included the, the, the two DLLs and made reference to them, added them to the references um, so that they're available for you to use. Um, if you are my student and you're working on your final project, don't necessarily include these DLLs in your final project because uh, that's part of the deliverable of your, of your project uh, requirements. So that's an explanation of where we are going in the tutorial and uh, what we're starting from. Uh, in the next video, we'll sort of, we'll get to it. We'll start adding some code to make this um, dynamic stuff happen.